NC Tejas Mark II is almost a fifth generation fighter minus the internal weapons bay. It has better serviceability, faster weapon loading time, enhanced survivability, better electronic warfare suit and radar which significantly enhances its capabilities. This fighter jet is being developed to replace the fleet of MiG-29 Mirage 2000 Jaguars in the future and will complement Sukhoi and Rafale similar to Tejas MK-1 which is developed to replace the aging fleet of MiG-21s. It is going to be the next bad boy of Indian Air Force. MK-2 will be a medium weight fighter unlike Tejas MK-1 which is a lightweight fighter. Tejas MK-2 is expected to have some of the most advanced and latest technologies and systems and most importantly will be easy to maintain with high availability and lower operating cost compared to its heavier twin engine counterparts. As we already know that HAL has mastered most of the 4.5th generation technologies with Tejas MK-1 such as unstable design and relaxed static stability which enhances the maneuverability of the fighter jet. Quadruplex digital fly-by-wire technology which means four flight control computers operating in parallel. 100% glass cockpit with digital systems. Composite airframe advanced avionics and softwares. Tejas MK2 will have upgrades on all those technologies and we will be discussing about them one by one in today's video. Design Tejas MK2 has a tailless compound delta wing configuration with a single vertical stabilizer and closed coupled canard wings. These canard wings boost maneuverability of Tejas and provide it with more lift. The canards in Tejas MK2 will be controlled by fly-by-wire system which will make them quicker to respond and provide superiority in maneuverability. The fly-by-wire also helps to control the instability. Just like Tejas MK1, the MK2 will also follow the unstable design to have the better maneuverability. The fighter jet will have a length of 14.6 meter, height of 4.6 meter and wingspan of 8.5 meter all greater than MK-1 variant. The bigger dimension will allow fighter jet to carry more weapons and aviation fuel thus increasing its range. The fighter jet will have a retractable air refueling probe. The advantage of retractable probe is that it decreases the aerodynamic drag and at the same time in-flight refueling increases the endurance of the jet to accomplish longer missions. The onboard oxygen generating system along with air refueling will provide a mission time of 3 to 4 hours, the highest for any LCA currently anywhere on the earth. Tejas MK2 will have a coating of RAM radar absorbent material which is developed by DRDO for MCA. More than 90% of the components of Tejas MK2 such as wings, fuselage, radar, canards are made up of composites which may explain durable, lighter and still there. The cockpit of aircraft will have a golden color tint and the same you would have noticed in the file and F-22 Raptor. It is because of a layer of indium tin oxide which helps the plane to vanish the detection which is possible and is created by HMD which is helmet mounted display of pilot. The Y-shaped air intake of this MK2 further enhances its stealth characteristic. Most of the electromagnetic waves of enemy's radar are reflected by the aircraft's engine and since it is a single engine jet, so its infrared signature would also be very less. Due to enhanced stealth feature, MK2 will have a smaller radar cross section which will enable them to locate a target at much longer distance and make the detection difficult for adversaries. This gives this MK2 advantage to see and strike first at enemy. The Tejas MK2 RCS is predicted to be between 0 to 0.02 meters squares. Further, the G414 engines have capability of super cruise, hence decreasing its infrared signature because the pilot won't be able to enable afterburner to make the plane travel faster than the speed of sound because in super cruise, the plane can cruise at supersonic speed without afterburner. A very few jets have this capability of super cruise like F-22 Raptor, Dassault Rafale, Su-35, Su-57, etc. 
the RC of TS MK2 is expected to be between 0.02 meter square, probably 0.01 meter square, which is the best for such class of aircraft. And just for comparison, the file has expected RCS of 1 to 1.25 meter squares till it do not use its electronic warfare suite. Cockpit. The initial version of this MK2 is planned to have touch-based two 6 by 8 inch main display with smart multiple functional display and one 5 by 5 inch smart multiple functional display which will have day and night mode. However, looking at the latest tender document, there has been change in the design and now this MK2 is to be equipped with high definition touch screen measuring 50 by 820 centimeters wide area display that will allow a redundant and intelligent presentation of information across its entire length with the capacity to receive inputs from multitask keys, touch screens or external interfaces. Using Data Fusion, it provides the pilot with information needed and is the main source of flight and mission information in the cockpit. The wide area display is considered as a great step forward in the cockpit design technology with significant operational capability advantage to meet the demands of existing and future threats and also handle high volumes of data supporting the pilot's ability to select, launch and guide weapons in perfect coordination. The TS MK2 will feature side stick controller like the SORT profile and F-35 Lightning II which will help to reduce the cockpit clutter. Few more prominent features of TS MK2 include helmet mounted display based on optical sensor and smart heads up display with improved field of vision. It will feature one mission management and display computer in place of two open architecture computers. Radar and Avionics Tejas MK2 will feature upgraded Uttam AESA radar with 912-968 transmitter and receiver PR modules. During Aero India 2021, it was observed that the nose cone area of Tejas MK2 will be smaller than Tejas MK1. However, it will still have more TRMs thanks to the high density packing new improved AESA radar which will allow to have more TI modules in a smaller space. The number of TI modules in MK2 is pretty decent. It is more than 838 modules of Rafael's RB E2 and slightly less than 1000 TI modules of AN APG-68 of F21. The Uttam AC radar of this MK2 would be able to detect an object of 0.001 meter square stealth fighters from 18 plus kilometers an object of 1 meter squares fighters like Rafale from 170 plus kilometers. Improved AEC radar will allow this MK2 to track more targets in scan mode and prioritize the target. It can thus take on multiple aircrafts demonstrating air dominance capabilities. The Uttam AEC radar in MK2 can track 64 targets at a maximum distance of 200 kilometers. This MK2 will also incorporate advanced electronic warfare suite, superior data link and software. It will have an IRST sensor and missile approach warning system integrated. The aircraft will be designed to have network centric warfare capability which means it can get or share target locations to engage from other fighter jets or ground based radars. The aircraft will also be powered by artificial intelligence and when pilot goes unconscious its control will be automatically transferred to the ground control. Engine and Aerodynamic Performance A powerful radar needs a powerful engine. Tejas MK2 will be powered by a more powerful G414 engine which produces a dry thrust of 58 kN and 98 kN of thrust with afterburners. Tejas MK2 is expected to have maximum speed of Mach 2 range of 2500 km, combat range of 1500 km, ferry range of 2500 km with additional sea fuel tanks and service ceiling of 50,000 feet. It will have thrust to weight ratio of 1.0 which is pretty decent for any medium weight fighter. MK2 will have a maximum takeoff weight of 17,500 kgs and a maximum speed of Mach 2 with capability of sustaining G forces of 9 to minus 3.5 G. Weapons This MK2 is going to have a versatile weapon package. MK2 will have 11 hard points, 3 more than MK1. 
MK2 will be integrated with GSH-23 cannon for close combat and weapon payload of 6.5 tons. For shorter range combat, it will use Astra IR missiles with 6 plus kilometers range. In beyond visual range category, it can carry Astra MK1 with a range of 100 plus kilometers, Astra MK2 with a range around 160 kilometers, and Astra MK3 with a range of 340 kilometers. In surface to air category, it will have a deadly scalp missiles currently being used with Rafales. It is also planned to integrate with Crystal Maze air to surface missile developed by Israel. It will also integrate Spice 2000 bomb which is another Israeli missile used in Balakot strike against Pakistani terror camp. This MK2 will also be integrated with Russian KH-31 anti-ship missiles and Brahmos NG airborne cruise missile. It will also have indigenously developed package which includes smart anti-airfield weapons saw, Rudram 1 and 2 missiles. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and jai hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We will be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.